Hello everyone, my name is Chris Yee and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm going to pop up my little, whoo, that's my nameplate right there. Hey, this is my first time doing a Q&A officially here on the Dice Tower. Um, things are going to get questionable, things are going to get answerable. That's how this works. You ask questions, I ask answers. I will not misspeak, not once time in this entire endeavor. So, hello everyone, welcome out. Uh, yes, this is my first time doing a QA. and a I, I did a um, live chat, one of the, the daily chats, back with one Mike Delisio, very unfortunately back in the day, and that was the closest thing I've done to this. So, because this is my first time uh, doing this, and not everybody knows me that well, you've seen some of the videos I've been in, of course, but I wanted to start off with a little uh, reversal here. I am going to tell you two truths and a lie. We're going to do this game. If you've not played this before, I'm going to tell you three statements, each of which sounds fantastical in some way. And one of them is a lie, but the other two are indeed the truth. So uh, I'll, I'll say those and then everyone in the chat can kind of guess, just guess which one. Maybe that'll lead to some questions and some fun. If not, it'll get awkward. And that's fine. Things are going to get awkward, I promise. So here we go. I wrote these down because I don't want to mess this up and make one of them sound super obvious as the lie. Three statements, one of which is untrue. Number one, I am recorded as the voice of the Las Vegas RTC public bus system. You are now approaching Tropicana Avenue. So, number two, I have been interviewed twice on the local Las Vegas news, neither time for being arrested. And number three, I was paid to play electric it's been to play lead guitar for a heavy metal rendition of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, a uh, production out in Las Vegas. And so that's it. Number one, I'm the voice of the bus system. Number two, I've been interviewed on local news twice. And number three, lead guitar in a heavy metal rendition of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So everybody go ahead and cast your votes, whether you think won, or, uh, won the bus two, the um, news, or three, the lead guitar. Which one of those is a lie? As you do that, I'm going to go through and uh, check some of these other comments here. And P, I see Mike Delisio in the chat stealing my thunder. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so just kind of looking through. Yes, so as I, as I mentioned, uh, Mornar, Mornar, this is my first time. Uh, and I am quite irregular. Not a regular, one might say. Uh, Nick Wagner is correct. My performance here actually determines whether I'll get to stay at the Dice Tower or not. Oh, that's not true. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Gator Dave asks. Uh, I'm going to try and bring this up here. Click add to broadcast. Ooh, look at me. I'm a whiz. So first question Gator Dave says... For those not familiar, what is your board gaming origin story? No radioactive spider. Uh, I played a lot of board games growing up as a kid. Well, I played some games growing up as a kid. Your Monopoly and your Clue and whatever. Those are you know family staples. And then uh, we got introduced to Risk, and that was really fun for me. Uh, and then my stepdad, when he came into our lives, my stepdad, I remember buying, or he him buying, of course, I was like six at the time, the Milton Bradley... Uh, Battle Masters, I think that's what that's called, the, uh, the the line of games in which they had Axis and Allies. And I helped him cut the miniatures off of the sprues. Such a thing was was so bizarre to me. I thought it was so cool. I thought that the uh, industrial factories were like big turrets and stuff. And can I made pew-pew noises and played with them. And then as I got older, I got to play Axis and Allies with them, and that was such a cool treat. But uh, bes you know, outside of that, I... Played a lot of mass market games as a kid, and uh, and then I, the year before I got married, I was dating Wendy uh, very seriously. My brother had just moved, or he was living in Alaska at the time, was visiting. I just came back from a two-year mission for my church, and so I had just gotten back. You know, recently at that time, my brother was visiting. He introduced us to a couple of board games. Uh, and one of them particularly sang to us. One of them was, one of them that he introduced us to was Settlers of Catan, which was good. The other one he introduced us to was Munchkin, which did not speak to us. But the, the other one was Dominion. 
And so Dominion is the game that really got me into board gaming. And I just, you know, it was amazing. You could play this whole game. You're not, you're not, you're not doing a deck building like a collectible card game. You know, oh my goodness, you're crafting the deck throughout the course of the game. Unbelievable. And you can play with a different setup. I was hooked just like that. So anyway, that is that one. Let's uh, let's keep going through here. People are chatting a little bit. Uh, bu -bu 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 this isn't a question, but it makes me feel good. <laughs> Monica asks, coffee or tea? <laughs> Neither. Sorry. If anything, I don't drink coffee at all. And sometimes I'll drink like a, like an herbal tea or a, a throat coat. Is you know if you got the if you got the <laughs> coffee coughs in the uh, in the uh, in the old throat there, so I'm a bit a little bit of a, a throat coat tea person. Oh, thank you for everybody saying nice things about me. Loopy asks, "What do you miss most about Las Vegas?" I'm going to go ahead and say like my family and stuff lives out there, but I don't think that's what you meant. I think you probably mean like the city overall. I miss. This is going to sound so silly. I miss having a functioning Sonic drive-in. The Sonic hamburger, no one goes there for the burgers, the ice cream joint. We have one out here. The service is awful. They have messed up our order nearly every time that we've gone to the Sonic, and yet we keep going because we're Las Vegas night owl people, and we're like, hey, it's 11 o'clock at night, let's go get some ice cream or something. Let's go treat our bodies horribly. I need to take take a better, better care of myself, and that's going to happen here soon. But anyway, besides the point, 11 o'clock ice cream, right? We're Las Vegas people. That's what you do. You can go get food any time of night. Well, Sonic is like one of the only things open, and the service is horrible. I miss having that. The, the food options are not too bad here, uh, but the, you know, I think that's the thing that I do miss about Vegas. Let's keep going. Michael Straw, Chris, what were you doing before joining the Dice Tower? Unemployed. Before that, I was a professional accountant. Uh, <laughs> I worked for a few years in uh, at a public accounting firm. I left that and I went for a few years and worked for a local Las Vegas casino group. And I was an internal auditor there. So I was the person that, you know, I, I did a lot of different things. I did audits for all of the different uh, gaming, uh, in, you know, revenue sources and stuff for the casinos. I got to go into cages and I got to watch people count millions of dollars in bills and in chips and in other forms of legal tender and whatnot. Uh, it was overwhelming. It was, it was a cool job, but with all of the shutdowns and everything in Las Vegas got hit really hard. And uh, that's what happens back in 2007, 2008 with the last economic uh, large recession, Las Vegas got hit really hard. Unemployment is high up there. And so being able to actually leave Las Vegas and get employment here was really neat for multiple reasons. One, getting a dream job, working at the Dice Tower, but two, having a job. <laughs> anyway, that's more uh, that's more than you, you bargained for. So let's see here. Who at the Dice Tower has the most similar game taste to you and whose taste differs the most? I don't know yet. I, I don't know, and that, that's the interesting thing, is that everyone has a, a bit of a quirk to what they enjoy. Um, people make fun of me for being a little bit of the dry, heavy Euro gamer, right? We're, Wendy and I are going through, my wife Wendy and I are going through and reviewing the Lacerda games and reviewing some of these that uh, other people haven't done. But that's not the only thing I like. I like a lot of silly games. I like a lot of uh, loud and boisterous and co-op games, whatever, you know what I mean? So there's, there's just a lot that I enjoy. Maybe Tom? Right, maybe Tom overall, but also I think Tom has a very broad sense of taste that he enjoys. And um, in terms of people, I, I don't know whose taste I differ with the most, and I guess we'll find out with time. All right, Mike Delicio mentioning that my, uh, my, my daily chat with him was the highlight of my career. I mean, honestly, it was such a big, awesome thing at the time. I, I remember actually feeling really, you know, uh, grateful and really happy that I was asked to do that. So, Mike, I appreciate you, man. I will never say that to your face. I'll say it through a camera to the screen in which you are watching me. No, I, I say, I say that to all the time. Tell people that you like him. Tell... I, I will not go on a rant. All right. 
Elvis, Beatles or Johnny Cash? Uh, in ranked order, Beatles for sure. Fairly close behind Johnny Cash, actually, and then somewhere in the dust of, uh, of a distant third place is Elvis. I don't dislike Elvis. I, I don't have no unlove for him, but uh, um, Elvis is fine. But yeah, the Beatles is definitely a large influence for me, and Johnny Cash. Man, that guy was rock and roll and punk rock and country all wrapped up into one thing. Hi, Krista. Better understand where your reviews come from. How would you describe yourself as a tabletop gamer? Uh, as a tabletop gamer. Now, I like a lot of stuff. Like I said, okay, I kind of mentioned this earlier. Dry Euro games, uh, that, that, that top ten list that they did uh, two weeks ago, right? Games that are really fun but ugly. That's me. I'm very fun, but I'm very ugly. No, 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 no. I, I like games that are, uh, they don't have to look good to me. But I enjoy really clever mechanisms. I, I, I am less of a thematic person, but I do appreciate when theme is well integrated into a game. Uh, but I'm really there for the mechanics, you know, the mechanisms, if you will. I'm, that's what I'm, I mostly care about. But I enjoy what a game can be about the mechanisms and the interplay of what's going on, but also can be about taking a step away from the components on the table and kind of appreciating the people around the table, trying to see what they're going to do and everything. But also, multiplayer solitaire, fantastic. So uh, I've, I've a bit of breadth, but that's kind of my, that's kind of a jam. Uh, Mike is, has guessed that everything that I said was a lie. I think, I've, I think I'm catching up to the part now where people are going to guess what's true or false. So we're going to circle back to that. But first, Vanessa says, Chris, you have a fantastic speaking voice. Have you ever done voiceover work? Um, well, actually, this is about a good time uh, to... Yeah, yeah people are, are guessing which thing was a lie. Yes, the bus system, number one, is a lie. But I actually knew the person who was the voice of the Las Vegas RTC bus system. Uh, <laughs> I actually met the guy, and, uh, and I thought it was awesome. He had a very good speaking voice, of course. And he was very intentional with the way that he spoke all the time. He was well carrying his voice at all times. You know, and so uh, I'm lazy and everything. So uh, I would love to do voiceover work. I'm in, and in fact, as part of this job, I've been doing those board game stories with, uh, with Fulvio P uh, Pisani, Fulvio Pisani, he, uh, you know, we've done uh, so far photosynthesis, right? That little, like, they kind of look like movie trailers, but they tell the story of the game. So photosynthesis, Last Aurora, the Lords of Hellas one just went up. And so that has been a dream come true. Because if you were to ask me for years and years and years, what was your dream job? Voice actor, voiceover person would be that. So uh, I love this job because I get to do a little bit of that and doing those those trailers with board game stories has really been part of it. Um, yeah, so a lot of people guess that number two is a lie. No, 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 I've been interviewed on the Las Vegas news, the local news, twice. Once was a much cooler or a better story than the other. One time was because I was part of a, uh, it was part of a, it was a group project when I was getting my degree, my accounting degree from UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, or some people joke, you know, these stands for University of Never Leaving Vegas. Showed them. So our group project was to do something good for the community. It was a management class, and we had to manage an entire large project. So we did this fundraiser for a local um, children's hospice system. And so we, we did the big fundraiser, and so that kind of just caught the local news because we, we hit, hit the right chord with what we were doing and we made an impact and we raised several thousand dollars uh, and also like toys and stuff for families with children who were suffering from terminal illnesses or conditions and so it was just a nice feel-good story so I was interviewed there. The other time that I was on the local news was because I skipped school to go stand in line to buy a PlayStation 3 because I was planning on flipping it and making lots of money so my brother and I and a few friends were, we didn't break a law, I just didn't go to school. Different. Uh, that was the year, that was the launch of the PlayStation 3, when half of the units were broken and unusable out of the box. So we did not flip them for a profit. We flipped them for only a $20 loss, which was, anyway. So anyway, don't speculate with gaming stuff, that's what I say. 
I'm, I'm not a person that backs Kickstarters to try and make money and sell them in the aftermarket. That's not me. All right. Uh, and then what was the third thing? Oh, I, I did play lead, lead guitar for Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. It looks like nobody guessed that, that that was the lie. Oh, oh, oh. The crow's nose thought that that was a lie. Terrible. All right, anyway, so good job, good job, everyone. I'm going to scan through these a little bit more. Those are my favorite fruit to throw. I, wow, nice. Uh, my favorite fruit to throw would probably be an orange because I feel like they have a nice density to them. They have a nice size. They're not too big. Uh, and they also have a splat. You know, I mean, apples, too hard. Oranges, I mean, need I say more, really? Uh, Monica asks, how do I start gaming? I, I did cover that a little bit earlier. Uh, what was the best thing I ate this weekend? The best thing I ate this weekend uh, was probably curry. Uh, yeah, a green Thai curry. Really good. Really good. All right. So uh, let's let's keep going here. If I could choose one theme to stick with the rest of my life, which would it be? I'm going to assume board game theme. I'm trading in medieval Europe. I'm sorry, right? That's a lot of the games that I enjoy is probably going to be centered around that theme, at least a story. In the future, I think board games are doing a fantastic job of diversifying themes a lot more. So, I mean, in the future, could be anything, right? But out of the games, like, if I had to stick with whatever's in my collection now, like, we're a boring medieval European guy in floppy hat. Like, that's, that's <laughs> probably the theme that I'd stick with. Maybe Industrial Revolution. There's a couple good games about that as well. After Mike's solo intro list to the Fast and Furious intro and the CSI intro, do you feel that you have set the bar too high for yourself and that I've already peaked? I peaked years ago. What you're seeing now is the decline of Chris Yee. Don't worry. What are my non-board gaming hobbies? Uh, I am a musician, right? Uh, as per, yeah, I did the Mike's uh, top 50 intro songs or intro list song. Uh, I've recorded a lot of, of silly stuff. We had we had a family tradition for a long time where we would record, uh, because my wife is also very musical. She plays piano, she sings fantastically, uh, and we would do, uh, like, goofy Christmas songs, and we would give them out to people because being a hobby musician is expensive and uh, doesn't make a lot of money. <laughs> so that would be like our, uh, hey, here's a Christmas gift for, like, family and friends and everybody, you know, we recorded this song or a couple of silly songs. So I really love doing that. We try to mess up as many genres as possible. What does uh, Deck the Hall sound like as a you know heavy metal piece, or, or what is um, uh, what's another good one that we did? We did we did Santa Baby, but we made it Mario Baby. It's about Super Mario Brothers. We did like a little acapella jazz type of thing. So really like really like doing music. Uh, really enjoy watching the Marvel movies, the Marvel TV shows. That's kind of what we're looking forward to. I keep waking up at random days and be like, is it Loki day? Oh, it's Friday. It's not actually Loki day. Is it Loki day? It's Sunday. So anyway, in a few days here. David A. asks, what is your ranking? Theme, story, mechanics, heaviness. Um, ooh, this is interesting. Um, I'm a mechanisms person. Mechanisms first and foremost. Theme and story and heaviness are all just, I don't know. There's very few themes that actively turn me off besides the, like, repulsive themes, right? Um, and I don't need any game that ever has a not-safe-for-work expansion, right? That falls in the repulsive category for me. But theme, story, and heaviness, I, I really like games, you know, across, uh, you know, across the aisle or across the pond or, or whatever you want to say it. Uh, so... Mechanisms, and then everything else kind of secondary. Is Ryan Lockett and Cole Worley a good pair to compare each other? Um, let's see. They both have four letters in their first name. They both have six letters in their last... Yeah? I think you figured it out. That's awesome. No, I don't know, because... Um, I assume you mean 
like game design wise or whatever. Ryan Locke is kind of that like he's like the 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 jack the jack king queen and ace of all of all traits you know what i mean uh, uh jack of all trades trades i mean right like is everything right the art the game design or whatever and uh and i don't know if i don't know as much about cole worley um yeah I, I i don't know as much about him but i know that he's very like we just reviewed oath and one of the things we said is like this guy designs games the way that he wants to they're not ex exactly for like mass appeal i think ryan lockett does make more games that have kind of broader mass appeal so i'm not sure i'm not sure how to how to compare the two gator dave asks are you pro or anti-yogurt pro i mean i'm i'm pro probiotics if that's what you're asking i guess right yogurts are high in probiotics yeah uh wait area expedition oh the area thing yeah um well you know unfortunately uh fortunately or unfortunately there's a copy of Ares expedition sitting over there we're gonna go play it sometime soon here because uh review is gonna go up soon so now oh, oh yeah you corrected Ares expedition the companies i understand the target exclusivity thing right it's gonna be good for the publisher and everything this is like half good for for consumers but not a great move what is the single work thing whatever that you're most proud of you're putting pressure on me here um the thing that i'm most proud of man i really had fun doing the shoots and marbles highlight reel like that was <laughs> if that's the peak of my career you see, yeah i peaked i'm on the decline i did shoots and marbles and i'm i'm on the decline again i don't know i've I really had fun doing some of those intros, like the uh, the Fast and Furious science intro with Mike. I, don't, I think those little things I, I, I just adore. They're completely unimportant, but I don't know. Uh, next question, any pet peeves? Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll think... Uh, I'll have to think. That's not something I know too much. Um... This is, a, this is a curious question. Why is origami overlooked as an innovation in board game mechanisms? I'm not sure. Uh, Garrett, if you can point out some games that use origami, then I might have a better idea what you mean. I'm curious about that. Have I played Dominion against Tom Vassell? No, I've actually played... Uh, no, I've not played too many older games with, with Tom. Uh, one of the things that I'm decently proud of is that I was the person that, uh, if, a few years ago, if, if you remember, Tom had played and didn't really love Zulkin, the Mayan calendar, and he had been saying, like, oh, I really like, uh, I really like this design team, like that group of people, I really like their games, maybe I should go revisit it. So I sat him down and I played, I taught it to him again at, uh, at Dice Tower West convention, actually. And, and uh, I'm not going to say I'm single-handedly responsible for increasing his view of that game. Because I'm not. But anyway. No, I haven't played too many older games with Tom. What's my favorite thing on the Sonic menu? I am a cookie dough blast kind of person. Although they have onion rings are fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you like my my really uh clashing wolverine x-men like varsity jacket uh yeah that that sits at my desk because i sit directly under the air conditioning vent and for the most part i'm fine with it but occasionally there's a few days where the air blows a little too hard sorry where and i was like oh this is the closest thing i have to a cardigan so that's why i did why i wore that for the mr rogers thing um no i bought it from walmart like seven years ago so i have no idea where you find anything like that anymore Ooh, so thank you for the compliments. I, I always appreciate compliments. I like them. I'm selfish that way. But uh, what what has been your most played game so far in 2021? Ooh, I play Destinies a lot. Like We played through that box, and I'm going to play more of it because there's that expansion with the, with the other few scenarios. So I'm going to play more of that. I'm trying to think if there's a game that I've played more than Destinies, right? There's got to be something that I've played like five or six times or something. I play Destinies a lot, and I really adore it. So I'm going to go with that. 
What is your oddest habit? I set the microwave timer. I always punch in a number. I don't use the, the plus 30 seconds button or the one or two minute quick time. I like to set the microwave timer to a specific number, like one minute and 56 seconds. It's more control in my life. The robots aren't taking over. They're not taking over me. Bah, 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 bah. People are talking about chili cheese dogs. and Oh, the chili cheese tots. That's a, that's a relatively cheap and such a healthy one in the morning meal that, uh, you know, when did I love? <laughs> How big is my personal game collection? It is, uh, it is larger than I want it to be at the moment. Uh, it is probably broaching 100 games, but that's because, I don't know if you know this, but working here, there is some access to board games. Uh, we, we've kept it around 75 to 80. We have, I mean, we don't, I, the number is less important. We have these two cabinets, right? Two, like, uh, they have doors on the little cabinets that are much smaller than a calyx shelf, right? Imagine, like, a, if you're going to use calyx as a reference, I know it's not a great reference, but, like, one of those big five-by-fours or whatever, like half of one of those. That's what we try to keep our collection to. We are, uh, where we lived in Las Vegas was a relatively small condo, and so we didn't want the collection to grow out of hand. We are one-in, one-out type of, of people. I would rather have a streamlined and good collection that I can look at and say, that's the game I want to play tonight. This is a game that works for the situation, or whatever, rather than having too many and feeling like, a, it, like it'd be harder to make a decision. We walk around the Dice Tower library here occasionally, and we're like, oh, let's pull off one of these old games, but which one? So, uh, my personal collection is, is relatively small. In fact, I would like to parse it down from the 100 that is peeking at, maybe cut out like another 20, 30. <laughs> How many times have I seriously considered voice work? A few different times. I don't know. It's, it's a hard gig. Uh, in the sense of there's a lot of people who want to do it. There's a lot of people that have good voices. I have a good voice, but I don't have training. And so if I were to really for serious go into it, then I would either have to, I feel like I would want to get some vocal training. And that takes time and money, which is something I, I had less of when I was an accountant. Um, I had a little bit more money, but I had less time. People still talking about Sonic. Favorite Phil Walker Harding game. Jason, you're, you're, you're killing me here. Uh, my favorite Phil Walker Harding game is probably Baron Park. I think that is, it is, uh, it is the highlight of all polyomino tetris -y board games for me. I haven't tried Isle of Cats yet. People say that one gives Baron Park a run for its money, but I think Baron Park is probably my favorite. Ooh, if I could be the minor or a background character in a movie, what movie would I pick? I mean... Selfishly, I'd want to be in like a Star Wars movie because millions of people watch Star Wars movies like all the time. So it would be easy to just be in the theater and be like, this is me! Or not, not a movie theater. I mean, I guess every time that someone watched Star Wars, hey, you know Star Wars? That guy that gets, uh, you know, laser bolted and, and blown up, you know, like seven seconds in the movie. <laughs> Loopy misses in and out burger. I, I, I do like In-N-Out quite a bit, yeah. I guess that's one thing I do miss from Vegas, is uh, just a few of the food options. Richard Saunders, are you classically trained musically? Yes, I studied, okay, before I studied accounting at UNLV, I was studying music education. Uh, I, a, I was studying classical guitar. I've been a guitarist for over half my life now. Well over half my life now. Uh, I did actually study, I've studied music theory and stuff, so... Uh, yes, I am classically trained, but I don't have a full degree in it. I did switch over into the business field. Bum, 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 bum. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh, this is just a funny statement. No, I've not worked uh, in the back rooms of the casinos in any, you know, physical uh, Ocean's eleven -y type of sense. Hey, by the way, I'm going to say this really quick. Ocean's Eleven, the most unbelievable thing to me, the part that is like that, like breaks my immersion the most is the fact that, here's a little behind the scenes, behind the scenes, the back 
rooms and the back passageways and stuff of all casinos. It could be the fanciest casino on the strip. It could be the ugliest, you know, ugliest, terrible, awful casino. They all look the same back of the house. They're all just like tan hallways with sheet metal along the walls. None of that, that Ocean's Eleven, like fancy back rooms and stuff. No, it's all utilitarian. People are pushing giant carts of like kegs and beers and, and food and whatnot. So they put sheet metal on the side so you don't slam and break like your nice wallpaper and, and, and uh, sheet, not, uh, yeah, sheet rock and stuff, right? It's super utilitarian. It could be the fanciest hotel, looks like garbage in the back, oil spills and stuff everywhere, right? That's how it goes. <laughs> if they were making a movie about the Dice Tower, what actor would you like to play yourself? Mike Delisio. I would like to say one of those handsome actors, but you probably have to go with like a chunkier boy, honestly. Do you have a favorite theme for games? Do I have a favorite theme? <sighs> Not particularly, because my tastes are so wide and varied that... And I like so many games with awful, boring themes. So, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't know if I have one offhand. But is there an underrepresented theme that I wish I saw more of? I just, I just love seeing underrepresented themes. We're playing, recently we've been playing that uh, Summer Camp game by Phil Walker-Harding. The one that just hit Target. That's so cool. That's neat. You know what I mean? It's It's... Joyous. I think I, I think I want joyous themes. I think that's what I want more of. Things that are happy, right? It doesn't have to be nature. It doesn't have to be camp. But, like, put a good game with nice mechanisms and stuff around, like, a, like a happy theme. Like, I didn't even go to summer camps as a kid. I grew up in Vegas, right? Summer camps would be go die in the desert, right? But I have an appreciation for, like, happy things like that. Make, let's, let's make some happy stuff, right? Enough floppy Euro hat, you know, Euro guys pointing at a castle on a box cover. We've got plenty. I don't mind that theme, but I'd rather have nicer ones. Let's see. What got me into gaming? Oh, yeah, I kind of addressed that already with Dominion, my brother, introducing us. He had been introduced by a couple of his friends. You know what I mean? It's, it's that, like, you pass on, you pass it on to each other. Do I like Red Raven games? I do. I do, but they are a company that is seriously underrepresented in my uh, in my in my plays. I've not played near and far, nor above and below. I'd really like to, but now that the new one is coming out, now or never, I'm definitely gonna play that. You know, uh, but I've I've liked some of the Red Raven games. I played more of their smaller stuff, but I gotta play a few more of their big things. Because Sleeping Gods was amazing. Climb a tree. Or a rocky cliff. I like rock climbing. I really do. I think that, uh, so living in Las Vegas, Red Rock Canyon was right nearby us. There were a lot of climbing gyms. There's a little bit more of that climbing culture because Las Vegas actually has hills and mountains. Uh, I've noticed that there's no hills, nor mountains, nor climbing culture out here. Florida's very flat. What got you into YouTubing? Podcasting. Um, <laughs> so... I've been told many a time that I have a good voice, and I like it, right? Um, so I wanted to do something. When I was a boring accountant, I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to do something, and I really love board games, and so I thought, well, let me try getting into this podcasting thing. So, you know, I started that up. Wendy and I have been doing that for over four years now. And at some point, I thought, okay, fine, let's, let's try this video. Let's see if it's hard as it is, because I'd like to do some playthroughs and whatever. And I just want to make the content that I like making and the, and the stuff that I like watching. And so, uh, yeah, and now I'm, you know, I'm here. You know, it's been years, years of, of work and uh, working with really bad, low-quality equipment. And now I'm looking at a camera that costs more than my first car cost, probably. Mike Delisio, being a troll, banned. Just kidding. Where's box two for two of the Feast for Odin in the library, Michael? Next to your desk. Um, some random dude asks, "What's the meal with Cool. How do you convince my wife to like heavier games? 
I don't think you can. You know what I mean? I, I think this is the thing is that, the, I mean, I'm not saying your wife, right? Your wife's not intelligent enough to, no, no, no. What I mean is um, some people will just not like heavier games. And other things, it just takes time, right? Like I did not like the first the sort of game that I ever played. I kind of hated, um, but I had a game group back in Vegas that wanted to play more of them and stuff. But I had a dedication to that game group, so if they wanted to pull out heavier and heavier games, that I would play them, right? But it's so much. I, I'm not going to push games that people don't really care for on, especially closer people like family and whatnot. What he doesn't like a game, I'm not going to push it on my wife. Uh, I, I just feel like with a game group and there's the expectation that everybody picks a game each week that we bring it to the table. If, if some people don't like a couple of heavier games or designer games, whatever, you know, a particular designer's games, you play one of those every few weeks or so. I don't know. I think the expectation is different. So I don't know if there's a way to convince people to like different types of games that they don't care for. Um, also, I should have read the rest of the question. How do I convince myself to like heavier games? Guilty. I should have read the rest of that question. Um, I, it just comes with time, and then if it if it matches your tastes, I don't know. Um, let's see. No, Gator Dave. I do not have a palmetto bug story yet, although I have plenty of mosquito stories. There's a lot of mosquitoes out here. Any YouTubers you like to watch? I like this guy named Z Garcia. Roy Canaday, Tom Vassell, I think that covers them all. Oh, Michael, Mike, Mike Delisio, I like it. Now, uh, YouTubers I like to watch. Lately, I've been watching more non-YouTube stuff. Movie reviews, I really like movie reviews. I think that people that can speak intelligently on a subject, uh, or even just casually on a subject, but they're excited and they're animated, uh, I like that. We just this weekend watched uh, Quiet Place 2, part 2. Uh, neither of us really like horror movies that much, but Quiet Place was a movie that really impressed us, really liked it, so we went and we watched uh, part 2 uh, on Saturday. So then this weekend I went and I looked up some of the YouTubers that I like, and I, I you know went and got some of their thoughts and stuff on, on those movies. I, I think that's fun. That's some of the YouTube that I like to watch the most lately. I was skipping a few questions, of course, especially stuff that I've already kind of like touched on or whatever. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Thank you, everyone, for your compliments. How do you describe your high school experience? You know what's funny is I uh, I always felt like I was a nerd and kind of a loser, but I was also like in a rock band. <laughs> in a band called the Stale Marshmallows, which is the nerdiest, loseriest kind of name to have for a high school band. But like, people liked me, and so when I graduate at some of like the the you know end of high school stuff like some people were like oh yeah it's chris he's a cool guy and so i don't know I, I i always felt like i was not cool enough to fit in most crowds or whatever but you know, I, I just try to be a nice person so high school was fine and i was so happy when i was done with it what's my favorite wild animal like at a zoo okay my favorite animal in general is a penguin I assume that's considered wild because I'm where I'm not allowed to own a domesticated penguin. I guess the the United States frowns on that and has laws against it. So, penguin. Da, 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 da. Hey, I incidentally asked the uh, last good movie I saw. Good Place Part Two or Good Place. Uh, good Place is a fantastic TV show. Quiet Place. Kalis, great game or greatest game? Okay, game. What's the most important seasoning on your spice rack? Garlic. Garlic powder, for sure. Uh, last good book that I read. I read the Red Rising trilogy. I read the first three. Uh, I'm extremely reticent to read the next two books because in the Red Rising series, people die. And I'm very happy with where the trilogy ended, and I can imagine a nice happily ever after. So I don't want to pick up into two more books and be like, are these people going to make it or not? I 
don't want that. <laughs> uh, but I, maybe I'll read it once the trilogy is done being published. I guess the third book is still in the works, so I'll see. I also have been reading Mistborn uh, by Brandon Sanderson. Super good. And then the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn. The, the new Thrawn trilogy. I read, I read two Thrawn trilogies, right? The old canon one and then the new canon one. And now there's a new, new one, Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy. Uh, I'm, th I'm thinking about taking a break from fantasy, though, and I've wanted to read, like, The Brothers Karamazov. I believe that one is Dostoevsky. I want to try and get back into some more, like, more classical literature, uh, but it'll take me some convincing, but I like it when I'm in it. Let's see. Could I name a game that surprised me in a positive way and a game that surprised me in a negative way when I first played them? Um, positive way was Destiny's. I thought Destiny sounded cool, but man, I really sunk my teeth into it. A game that surprised me in a negative way. Ooh. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think on that one a little bit more. Have you been in an elevator with a celebrity? Look, every time I walk into an elevator, I'm with myself. Um, no, I walked by David Spade once in like a Las Vegas casino. And I was like, wow. I think I walked by David Spade, and the person I was with was like, I think that was David Spade. Short. Does Eric somehow have competition for Golden Boys? No. Eric is trained, and he's very, very good. Who or what influences my work the most? It's a good question. I don't know. I, uh, I just like having fun. And so... Uh, I, I, I appreciate the YouTubers and stuff out there that, that put humor and, and, like, put the time into crafting, uh, you know, little skits and stuff. And, you know, Tom has done that with a few different things as well. Like, the uh, if you've ever watched the... Go watch a few of his reviews, like the food company, the DoorDash game. Stuff like that. You know, I appreciate I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, Mike Delisio being a troll. People who only show part of a game set. Feast Road and Box 1 of 2. I could... Mike, go grab me Feast Road and Box 2 for 2. 2 out of... 2, two for Tuesday. Go get it. Worst part of my job. Well, now the answer is Mike Delisio. <laughs> what are my top three video games of all time? Two or three of them might be Legend of Zelda games. I adore Breath of the Wild. I adore Ocarina of Time. I really love Majora's Mask, but um, also I, I got to throw in Mario Kart. Um, which one is is a harder question? What do I like to do when nobody's looking? Lots of things. Breathe primarily. Ooh, here's an interesting question. Are you a better bowler or a pool player? Um, now bowler. I've done more bowling recently. In fact, I I uh, I almost brought my last my uh, when I was working for Station Casinos in Vegas. I almost brought my Station Casinos team to victory with my bowling talent, but uh, we lost by like a few pins. So this is a, I'm not bitter. Or anything about that. Um, but what's the defining line that keeps us from being considered board games? Size! <laughs> what's one thing I really want the world to know about me? I just want people to be nice. I try to be nice, right? That's 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 the biggest thing. Um, Scythe or Mage Knight? I have played Scythe. I have not played Mage Knight. I don't think that's the answer to your question, but I have I have nothing more to be able to uh, uh, to I have no more wisdom to impart. I'm usually a fountain of endless wisdom. Rococo first or second edition? First. I I don't know. I'm I'm a first edition kind of person. 
Thank you, Michael. I think I'm a first edition kind of a person. Um, I'd really like the Michael Menzel artwork and the, uh, oh gosh, both look great. Don't get me wrong. And I really love, you know, tools, artwork and graphic design and everything, but I think the second edition is a teensy bit overproduced. But I've only played it, I don't know, I, maybe there's like a middle tier version where like the, some of the, like the lace tokens aren't like, oh, it's kind of silly look. I don't know. Uh, whoo, if I could update, reprint, or re-implement any game, what would it be? What I'm really hoping for, what I think would be super good, I love a game called Airlines Europe. It's by Alan Moon. It is it is a a good follow up game to Ticket to Riot, kind of right. In the in terms of like, it has a little bit of route building, but it's like a very simple stock like share kind of game, and I think that it is a bit ugly. So if you could give it that Roxley Games treatment, like what they did to Brass, oh, I'd love it. Roy says that Chris has confirmed a scalper. Have you thought about designing my own board game? It seems like working with the dice will give you a lot of access to resources. Yeah, it's true. My first week here, Roy was like, Chris, do you want this gigantic bag of like 3,000 wooden cubes? Someone sent it to me as a joke because they joke that I make Euro games. So I have, I have thousands of cubes just sitting at home. Incidentally, a, a friend of mine and I have, uh, it's more than joke, no joked about, but we've, we've been working on a game on the side. It's been uh, grinded to a halt, unfortunately, with moving, and there's a few other stresses and stuff that are keeping my time busy, but things will get better here shortly, and I want to get back to designing uh, what we have been calling uh, Colored Cube Factory, because... Why put a theme on a game if, if your average publisher is going to look at a game and say, no, just, it's going to be about, you know, donkeys in uh, a country that has good artwork or something, right? So anyway, uh, I have a few different ideas, but most of the ideas have actually come before working at the Dice Tower. Now I almost feel inundated with games that I kind of want maybe a little bit of a break, uh, but... I really want to get back to some of the design I've done. Not that it's going to be great, but at least it's fun. Look, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to address this once right here, okay? That bat that is not the bathroom studio, okay? Other rooms have curtains in them. This is the this is what I'm going to say about it, right? There's a, there's a bit of a noise issue with the microphone back there, and so yeah, we're I'm, I'm working on on some of that stuff. But anyway, look, at this point, henceforth, anyone that makes more comments about the bathroom thing, I'm gonna delete your comments. Okay, it's not a bathroom, it's a studio. There's a curtain. If I were a home appliance, what would I be? I think the answer is dead. I don't think I would be living anymore. Your top three movies of all time? Come on! This is a good one! Woof! Woof! Alright, let's go with, um... Let's go with Dark Knight. Shawshank Redemption. Mm. And, and Star Wars has to be in there, but it's... I really love the trilogy more so that... Maybe Rogue One? Let's go with Rogue One. I think that's my favorite Star Wars film. Or Jurassic Park. Bam! Four. Because who's in charge? I am. I'm in, I'm the captain here. Uh, do I ever do I ever use a solo mode to learn a game? Usually not, because usually solo modes tend to have more rules on them than the base game. Uh, I do enjoy playing games with solo modes in them and everything, uh, but I would seldom use it to learn the game, but that's just because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to learn more than necessary. Um, but I will sometimes set up a game and I'll play two-handed, so to speak, right? Like I'll just kind of walk through some of the turns if I need to, to grok a game like that. Um, Co-op games are especially good because that is essentially oftentimes the solo mode. Top five games on my library. Um... I'll answer that a different time. I mean, I'm, I'm inevitably going to do like a top 10 games or you know, or something at some point. 
Ho, 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 ho. Um, hi, Chris. What is your favorite knockoff Disney store in Florida? There's plenty. I haven't actually been in one. Almost, I mean, things have been so shut down almost the whole time that I lived here. So it's it's nice, though, that I'm going to be able to get to see more. All right. Let's go through some more. I'm going to skip a little bit more. Oh, the current uh, Vegas Golden Knights versus Montreal Canadian series. People know that I wear the, the Vegas Golden Knights shirt. I'm a fan of the Golden Knights. I've been so busy, I have not really kept up that much. Uh, but I've watched a few of the games of this last season. You know, I've lived here since January, uh, and life has been hectic. But uh, I, I'm i very excited to follow the scores of the last several games here. <laughs> Big, I, I mean, I'm excited, though. It, and 2-2 two and two out of a you know best-of-four circuit. Tension's good. No, I don't play a specific color in board games, actually, because, David, uh, we were playing one time with this couple that I think the game had, like, color-dependent, like, you're Delta Power and then you're that color or whatever. We were playing this game with some of our friends one time, and they kept moving each other's pieces because they were like, oh, I'm usually the blue and you're usually the green. And so at that point, I vowed that I would not play a specific color because I never wanted that situation where I couldn't, like, where I was like, I'm moving the green pieces because I always play green or something. My favorite, with a U, favorite metal music band. I'm going to go with Metallica, right, as my favorite, but uh, I've been a huge fan of In Flames, Swedish death metal, for, for years. They were actually my first concert. Uh, and then uh, Amona Marth, I've really been enjoying. Ghost, I've been getting into a lot, a lot recently. Oh, why is the Chrissy Dice person pushing a meeple off a boat? So it's a cute little... Uh, Tina, the artist, does such an amazing job with these little characters. Uh, and so my podcast was called Meeple Overboard for a long time. Or, well, not for a long It still is called that. Because the logo we made by taking some pieces, you know, uh, from Kingdom Builder. And so there's a meeple. Like, the original picture I took is a little boat meeple from Kingdom Builder. I think it's from that game. And then there's a little meeple, like, rocked over to the side. Uh, and we called our podcast Meeple Overboard. Wendy came up with the name in, like, two seconds. I was like, what's a good punny name for a board gaming podcast? She's like, how about Meeple Overboard? Bam! So, uh, Tina made this, that cute, really cute little dice person of me, as, like, an allusion to that. And so, super, super awesome. Um, Z asked if I understand how the passage of time works. No, I, I don't really understand fourth dimensional hyper time space continuum stuff. Um, Dan says Flutterby uses origami. Well, I'm curious. I'll have to look into that. What is the biggest size of shark you think you could beat in an open water fight? Relatively small. I mean, they have like little. Mako sharks, don't they? That are like this big. I can handle that. Uh, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Do, 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 do. Hidden or shared in public objectives? One of my favorite mechanisms in the game is in Terraforming Mars, where there's public objectives, uh, but not all of them are funded at the start of the game. Over the course of play, players create end game scoring objectives. I love that. I think I like that more than I like hidden, uh, personally. But hidden objectives can be fun. But you, you mean like usually that point in the game where someone's like, oh, uh, you're going for purple berries, you know? All through the forest they sing out in chorus. Bouncing along as their song fills the air. Gummy bears. If I played New York Zoo, I've not. That's another one I've heard compared to um, heard compared to Baron Park. I love how Hollywood shows nothing but fancy people in casinos. Where are all the grannies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is another funny part about living in Vegas. You walk around and you're like, oh, yeah, the average person in a movie looks a lot nicer than the average person in real life. Also, 
probably smells better. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. How many Dice Tower events have you been to? Uh, MeepleCon back in Vegas became Dice Tower West, so we've gone to that for the last several years. And then I've done Dice Tower Cruise uh, two years ago. And that was utterly delightful. Absolutely delightful. All right, let's do this. Last few minutes, I wanna, I've want i always wanted to do this. Sometimes when there's guest Q&A'ers, we'll do a lightning round. Consider this lightning round. Uh, this or that, A or B. Go ahead and ask uh, in the last few minutes here, and I'm going to rapid fire through some of these. You know, do you prefer ice cream or bugs? Ice cream. Let's go ahead and do that as I peruse here through some of the last questions, and then, uh, yeah, and then I'll I'll do those lightning questions. Woodworking and metalworking YouTubers are awesome. I'll look into that because that sounds really delightful. Um, Chris, when are you when are you taking over all the voiceovers with my deep and soothing, comforting voice? Well, thank you. I think I threw in the word soothing. No, I mean, well, I mean Eric, just so good. I'm no Eric Summer. I'll just go ahead and say that. Let's see. Penguin, good choice. Thank you. Oh, that's true. And New York Zoo is penguins, doesn't it? Golly, I really need to. I really need to do that. Interesting. As a Brit, I feel like I get your sense of humor, whereas others tend to struggle. I have always been the kind of person that is okay making jokes that only I find to be funny. I've always been okay with it. So maybe that's uh, maybe that's something that we share. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at this. This is just nepotism right here. What? Favorite game from your old gaming group in Vegas would you like to introduce to your new group in Florida? Um, I know a couple of the people in the office have said, like, yeah, it's maybe we should try one of these, like, you know, Vitalis Serta games. Honestly, uh, some of the people here in the chat are from my old Vegas gaming group, and I would never have picked up some of these Lacerda games and stuff without them. So thank you to you guys for that. Mike asks, have we ever been in an elevator together? That's a good question. I think at some point it's gonna it's gonna happen. All right. Super Mario 64 is greater than Ocarina of Time. Woo! That's a bold claim. Um, all right. Jordan says uh, Rogue One is the best Star Wars movie. I agree. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to pull these up on the screen because it's, I think it'll just take too much time. So, sing or dance? Uh, sing. Groot or Batman? Batman. But, ooh, that's a good, that's a good. Uh, Lacerda Knizia? Ooh. Um, both have, I think, an equal ratio of hits and misses for me. I'm going to go with Lacerda, I guess, right? I don't know. I really like Knizia games. Tom or Z? I'm not going to answer that. Pasta or rice? Rice. I'm Korean. Uh, Lee's or total wine? <laughs> is that Lee's discount liquor? Is that a Las Vegas throwback? <laughs> brass or terraforming Mars? Depends on the day, but usually I'm going to lean to, to brass. Birmingham specifically is my favorite. Vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Vanilla, because mix-ins are so good. Tired Japanese food? Uh, I'm going to go Japanese. Thunderbolts or lightning in terms of fright? Very, very. I think is the answer you're looking for. Um, that's your code. I, it's been so long since I've had either. I don't really remember. Dr. Pepper. I guess Pepsi, if I had to make a choice. Mike or a kick in the head? I'm going to choose Mike out of this one. Sorry. Uh, eat or sleep. Uh, I don't sleep enough, so definitely eat would be the answer. Uh, apples or oranges? Uh, apples. The juice is better. Grilled cheese or cheese curds? Grilled cheese, but... Good choice. Creepy or cute? Cute, obviously. Marvel or DC? Um, my heart's going to go with DC. Make a good movie, right? You have made one since Shazam. Uh, and one or two or four player games. Four, I think. Tacos or burritos? I'm going to go with tacos. A good tacos al pastor is so, so good. Toast or nail guns? Toast. I haven't had to use a nail gun ever in my life, actually. 
Micro Monopoly? Goodness, you people have a very low estimation of Mike. I was about to say Monopoly is a joke, but no. Planes, trains, or automobiles? I haven't played any of those games, um, but in real life, automobiles are the most useful to me. Star Wars over Star Trek, for me. Um, cream cheese on a bagel instead of butter. Dry heat or humid heat? They both are terrible, but I'm really enjoying the humidity out here. Lord of the Rings or Mansions of Madness? Uh, Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle Earth. Ooh, am I, am I doing good on these? Have good or get give. I don't even know what that means. Um, engine building. I really love engine building games over area control, but area control is pretty decent. Hockey over football. Uh, Mongoose over snakes. I've had more of their bikes. Uh, PlayStation over Xbox. I've never owned a PlayStation. New York, New York, Circus, Circus. <laughs> Um, I've been to the Circus Circus more recently. It took my kid there uh, uh, quite a few times for the arcade. But New York, New York is actually not a bad arcade either. Uh, lions or tigers? Tigers? Take that or roll and move. I've had more fun with roll and move games. There's, I mean, like a Deep Sea Adventures considered roll and move. Um, snakes over spiders, I guess. Plane trip over road trip. Uh, Orlando over Tampa. I've never been to Tampa. Um, I didn't enjoy the Mercado, Mercado Lisboa at any player account, but two player was way better. New York Pizza over Chicago, although Chicago is pretty good. Uh, I prefer Furious over Fast. Uh, elevator instead of Lift. And then, oh my gosh, is he still going? Good job, everyone. All right, I'm going to pick the last few that are really fun ones. Uh, Dreamsicle over 50-50 bar. I love it. Glasses or hearing aid? Glasses, baby. That's what I'm all about. Last one's here to wrap up with. Nevada or Florida? Gosh. Um, I mean, Florida's my current home. Golden Knights. Vegas Golden Knights are my home team. But, uh, I don't know. Let's go with Florida. Florida's been great. All right. So, everyone, I think that that is time. I've gone, in fact, over because I wanted to make sure to get... Uh, you know, get some of these things. So, did I start a cruise or retreat? I haven't been to the retreat. I will be to a retreat soon in September. If you're there, play some games with me. I would love to. Like, pull out Pete's Roden because it is, uh, it's a game that I adore. But, uh, you know, that, that'll be a really good opportunity to come play it. Hall and Oates over Air Supply. And with that, thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you coming out here, chatting with me for a little while. I hope that I've been some fun entertainment for your day. Thank you to everybody that has come on out. Thank you to Mike Delicio for being my personal butler and bringing me box two of two for A Feast for Odin, the Norwegian's expansion. One of the best out there on the market. So everyone, have a great day. And uh, what does Tom usually say? Have fun with air supply. Mm.